<laughs> panic button time. We're changing the so topics. Um, look, season's not started for a lot of people, right? But the uh, the off season doesn't leave some of us with a good feeling about what should be happening. So we're going to start with people who need to hit the panic button already. And we're looking at you, Miami Heat. This is an obvious one. They were supposed to do so much during the off season. They did absolutely nothing. It was it was looking to be great. They didn't get Dame. They didn't get Beal. Should Heat fans be hitting the panic button? I'm yes, but you know not fully. But oh, yes, a half hit? because everyone else, it seems like the Celtics, the the Bucks, they took this huge step, right? Yeah. And the Miami Heat have this glorious year last year. They go on this run. Everyone's talking about Jimmy Butler and playoff Jimmy. Eric Spolster is about to you know get a huge contract to be the highest paid coach of all time. And then for whatever reason, they, they lose Gabe Vincent, they lose Max Struess, and they don't make any drastic changes to a team that at the end of the day didn't win at all last year. So yeah, I'm panicking a little bit just because it seems like there's now a huge gap between them and the top of the East. But then the reason I'm not is because they are the Heat and they are that culture and they do play the right way and they're going to be there. Like they're still going to get into the play in again as the postseason to play in. Uh, yeah, that's because we'll if they're a 10 seed or a 6 seed, I still it, I still don't want to play them in the postseason. They're the poster child for that. Yeah, like I I don't want to play them first round. I'm not panicking. Miami <laughs> always crashes the party. <laughs> they always crash the party. They always find a way in. Um, and look, speaking of duos. Jimmy and Bam should be enough for them to compete at a high level. You know, those are all-star caliber guys. They get paid like it, they play like it. And like I said, they always put, them, they always put themselves in a position where, um, you know, they make deep playoff runs. So I don't think we panic yet. All right, then we got another one. I'm gonna panic on this one. So Memphis Grizzlies, you don't have John Morant for 25 games. For Steven, sure panic. Uh, that's, right, done? Okay. Yeah, 20, 25 games without one of, your, one, one of your better players and no Steven Adams? Yeah. That's tough. I'm oh, but yet the Spurs aren't going to make the plan. I'm going to play devil's advocate here. I'm going to steal. Uh, You're putting Memphis above the Spurs regardless. Absolutely. Yes. They've I been think if I think if John Morant was suspended for the full year, they're still going to have a better record. Uh, than, that's than that's hurtful. <laughs> but here's the thing: 25 games. It's not like a, it's not a week. It's not it's not two. This is a huge chunk that could put them yeah. out of the postseason. But with that being said, John Morant is John Morant, and he is going to be ready to go when it comes. And I, I'm hopeful that he changed. I'm hopeful that he grew up. But on the court, there's no questions about him. He is a bona fide star. And with 25 games, I'm not good at math, but they still have, you know, 50 or whatever, some, some games left for him, with him <laughs> in the lineup where they can make a huge run. I mean, they did tread water when he was out last season. I know they've lost a few pieces, but they were able to kind of keep it afloat without him. Yeah. And so they, they got to do it again. And they, they, I mean, they lost Dylan Brooks. They, they added some other pieces. But yeah, this team, they still have Jaron Jackson. They still have Desmond Bain, who's one of the better shooters in the league. So they still have the pieces to go out there and kind of tread water until he gets back. And I think it's enough time that when he is back, they can still get in that lower half of the seating and, and uh, playing. And again, this is one of those teams that's going to be in the bottom half of the playoff standings, yeah. and then someone's going to have to play them fully loaded with John Morant, and that is going to be no good. What's the latest on him as far as, I mean, it, we obviously haven't seen him in quite some time. What kind of off season was he looking at? Yeah, I mean, I think Adam sort of even talked about it last night, counseling, working with the league, trying to make sure he stays on track for a return after that 25-game suspension. But that's why you're Memphis. You go out and you go get Marcus Smart. You go out and you get Derrick Rose. I think smart. the idea behind getting Smart was smart, so that he can start for John Morant. Mm -hmm. in, in the, and, then the, and then once John Morant's back, you can play, play the two in the backcourt together. I, for, I forgot Marcus Smart was there. Yeah, definitely. I was hoping you Spurs. would always forget that and that the world would forget that <laughs> Marcus Smart was By there. Way, he is also the definition of a grit and grime Memphis Grizzly. Like, he is a. He's what yeah. Dylan Brooks wanted to be. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah, he, you know what? what That's a perfect way to put it. Thank yeah. you. He, he is what Dylan Brooks wanted to yeah, be. Yeah, so it is. It's hell of an upgrade. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, they're going to be just fine. All right, so Sixers, I mean, we had the live breaking news earlier from Shams that Harden is officially, he's there. He's, he's there, but um, he's there, but 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 this I mean, is a panic button sitch. I mean, you're not going <laughs> to have James. Hard I mean, it, it's he's going back to Philadelphia with the mindset of he's going to restart his ramp up process. Now, how long that ramp up is going to be, you know, only James Harden, only the Sixers medical staff. They know how long that ramp up will be. But this is a guy that has dealt with hamstring injuries in the past. Uh, but I think when you when you're James Harden. What he meant to that team, I think he averaged 21 points, 11 assists, led the league in assists. This, is, this guy's not in your lineup tomorrow, which I don't expect him to be. He's right. not expected to play tomorrow. 
I, I personally don't expect him to play anytime soon. This is a guy that's been, has done one five on five in a month. That doesn't sound like a guy that's ready to play now. It, but I mean, come on. Like, without him in the lineup, look, Tyrese Maxey is going to be I a I just stud, would though. like to talk about the Philadelphia 76ers about basketball nope. one time. He hijacked it. It's been, no, but it's been years <laughs> like this. It's wow. been years, whether it's something with Doc or something with Joel or ben Simmons. James, Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons it's always something that has nothing to do with how they play. Yeah, it's, it's panic at the disco, Michelle. <laughs> it, it, it is panic. Pan, the, he's, he's, if he's ramping up right now, it's, it's for the Clippers. You know what I mean? He's, right. not, he's ramping up for a... <laughs> He's ramping up for another team. He's not That's playing so there. I think that that, that he, the the bridge is burnt. Like he he's not going back there, and it's going to be a huge onus on Joel, Tyrese Maxey, these other guys to kind of carry that load while he's out because I can't see him playing another game in Philly.